Hello and welcome to One Cool Thing, PC Mag's daily show where we show you one cool thing which we are testing out here in the PC Mag Labs. I am Sasha Segan, this is Michael Muchmore. We are at a table and if you are on Facebook, then please ask questions, make comments. Uh, Social Pete here will read out your questions and comments to us and we will have a dialogue. If you are on YouTube, please like and subscribe. Consider coming over to Facebook at 10 a.m. on uh, 10 a.m. Eastern on weekdays to participate in the Cool Thing discussion. Uh, today's cool thing is software and that's why we're sitting at a table so we can set up this laptop so Michael can show off this software which is DxO Photo Lab and this is a competitor to Lightroom, Photoshop Elements, those uh, kind of basic photo management and editing software but from the people who bring us DxO Mark, the frequently gamed, uh, mysteriously <laughs> rated uh, set of phone, set of uh, camera and phone uh, photo quality ratings uh, for which the latest phone always appears to have the highest DxO Mark ever. <laughs> mm. <laughs> Some of the cameras do get better, so. They do, they do. Uh, but uh, so now these uh, DxO Mark folks, they also make photo software. Yeah, they do, and it's it's pretty special, pretty nice um, photo software. This is actually an editor's choice. Um, they recently renamed it, for years it was called DxO Optics Pro, and it even got up to version 11 but they renamed it Photolab, which kind of makes sense because yeah. you're, you're working on photos, you're not, it's not really, it, it, the optics play a part, but it's not. Um, yeah, yeah, and especially as maybe as a less professional photo product buyer, I, or photo editing product buyer, I would not necessarily buy something called optics. Exactly. I would think it would be about like lenses or something. Exactly, so yeah, it was kind of a good, um, I mean, it's always a risk to change your name, but I think in this case, it was a pretty good choice. So what does this do, and why should you use it instead of Photoshop Elements? Okay, now, DxO, um, DxO software um, works best, and actually most photo software works best if you're using raw images from your camera. Um, raw format. Um, by the way, I think it, it's it's not an acronym. I don't know why everyone capitalizes it. Yeah. It just means the raw image. I know, anyway, I know. <laughs> anyway, that's my little, uh, one of my little peeves. It doesn't stand for like, righteous <laughs> aperture, right, right and through and or something. And it's something. not even the, the extension name. Like, cause um, yeah. for, I think, um, Canon, uh, Canon is CR2, and mm -hmm. Nikon is NEF, Sony is ARW, I believe. Mm -hmm. Anyway, but, so it's not even extended. Anyway, enough of that uh, little screed. Um, anyway, but DxO Photo Lab takes a raw image and, and will automatically tune it based on your camera sensor because they've done all that research on the sensors, your camera sensor and your lens. So basically, every time you load a photo, it will load modules specific to your camera um, body and lens. And um, So this is actually the specific answer to the problem that our photo expert Jim Fisher found on the Samsung Galaxy S9 phone which was that the Galaxy S9 has the best camera hardware of any smartphone available, but the JPEG encoder in the Galaxy right. S9 is overly enthusiastic. Do those let you um, capture raw? You bet. They do, And okay. he said it captures terrific raw images, Good. and he was disappointed in the JPEGs, but feed those raw images into here, Right, and, and there you and got you can, it. You can, and the thing is, when you do you edit raw photos, you get so much more control. Um, you can actually change the white balance after the fact. This is something you cannot do this in JPEG, um, and you just get a lot more control over the the shadows. Um, so, for example, you take one of those pictures where there's a beautiful mm -hmm. background and the person's face is all dark. Um, if you have a JPEG, you brighten that up, everything's going to brighten up. But in a, in a raw image, you can pretty much pinpoint it to just the face mm. and then the background sound stays the same. Um, but now look at the screen here. Um, now notice I've loaded this photo and it says available DxO op optics modules. And it hey, can, but it says the old word optics. Yeah, so. and it can <laughs> give a good guess as to what camera you no, might it, be using. Yeah, it, no, it knows exactly what camera you're using based from the metadata in the photo. Then why so, does it say you're using both a Canon and an lens? Because this folder has, has oh, content from okay, all of those, okay. yeah. So I'm gonna click all of these um, because we might open some of the other pictures. So what happens is though, once you load this, um, these modules, they're downloading. So while What's we download, download these here? modules, let's take a question. Can you clarify with price? It's just a yeah. one-time purchase and is there a free version? It is a one-time purchase. There's a free trial, no free version. Um, right now, I'm thinking of another one. It, mm -hmm. Sony Capture One comes free with Sony cameras, but that's a different thing. This mm -hmm. is, no, there's a 129 version 
Uh, it's a one-time price, and there's a 199 version. Now, you, you lose some of the cooler features if you get the 120. You, you'll still get some good tools with the 129 version, but if you get the 199, you're going to get a, a really cool tool that I'm going to show you in a minute. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we've loaded our modules. Mm -hmm. So what happens now is um, it automatically does a best guess to, to improve the image. Mm -hmm. and, and you can hit this compare button to see the original. So now, mm -hmm. see how the geometry from the lens has changed. Mm, we've yeah, we've, we've yeah. got haziness that goes away. So here's the... Uh, um, Even the shape of things has changed. Sorry, wait a minute. <laughs> it looks like the original is better in the case. But never mind. Um, but it's brightened it up a little mm, bit. Mm. Yeah. The shape change, that's the geometry from the lens um, mm, distortions. Mm, mm, mm. Okay, so that's... Um, this is in the organized mode. It's got just these two modes, organize and customize. So it's kind of, it's a little bit weak in the organized. So if you really want to like import your photos and organize them thoroughly with lots of different tools, Lightroom is your best bet. And that's my overall um, photo workflow uh, editor's mm -hmm. choice. Mm -hmm. and Lightroom has a ton of great tools too. But this, but the XO has some unique tools. Um, Let's take another question. Yeah. Would you say this is an alternative to Photoshop or would you use it in conjunction with it? If you're, if you're just doing photography, um, you could use this instead of Photoshop. And, and they've recently added um, a new, um, it, when, they, when they updated to Photolab from Optics Pro, they um, actually bought Nick Software from Google, which bought it a couple of years ago, did nothing with it. And um, luckily, uh, DxO is taking over the reins and, and implemented some um, Nick software tools into this and, and for local adjustments. So where you get brushes and if I just want to affect, um, you know, that those hills and nothing else, I can put a brush and lighten that up. Um, this kind of local adjustment tool was not in the program before and that's a kind of a Photoshop type thing. Yeah, and I think something we should point out is that this is photo editing software. Uh, Photoshop, Photoshop is also misnamed at this point. A lot of drawing, a lot of art, a lot exactly. of graphic uh, uh, design. Exactly, 3D rendering, graphic design, logo design. Um, every artist I know uses Photoshop to create their artworks. Photoshop isn't really primarily photo editing software right. anymore. And their this last, is photo their editing Their last software. update was all about fonts and right. you know, right. things right. like that. Right. Um, so yeah, this is purely for photographers. Mm -hmm. um, but let me just show you um, the coolest thing here. When we go into the customize um, setting here, and notice I can just scroll in and out with the mouse wheel easily. Here it's a trackpad, but same idea. So now look at the noise reduction tool here where my mm -hmm. cursor is. Now see this prime choice? Mm -hmm. This is a really interesting feature. What, what, what DxO did was say, look, if we have more time, mm. we can reduce noise better. So what we're going to say is if you want to choose prime, it could take you up to a minute to export one image. Wow. But the result is amazing. And let me show right. you that. Um, this so is a, relatively this, chill. Now look at the, the, the left side shows mm. the original noise in the photo. And the right side is after we've applied DxO prime. Mm. And you can just that's, see. That's impressive. It's really impressive. That is really impressive. Yeah. Let's take another question. Can you create layered images? It doesn't work with layers. And I don't know, as, as primary layer photographer, um, I really don't like layers. I mean, sure, I use them when I have to. And you know, they're fine for adding titles and effects and things. And I know a lot of the pros like to use like adjustment layers and things. Yeah, it is using layers because everything is stored separately. You're not changing the original file. It's, file. it's non-destructive. Um, but you're, the layers are hidden from you. you don't, um, Actually, Capture Pro, I don't know if we talked about that. Capture Pro on the show, we might have. Um, but they added a thing with layers, and to me it just sort of complicates. If I'm a photographer, I want to do my adjustments and get the picture perfect. I don't want to worry about layers. Yeah, so this is mo once more, like, I think, I think we're describing to some extent the difference between, uh, between essentially photo lab software and broad creativity software. Broad creativity software needs layers because you are going to be creating, um, you're, you're going to be creating 
new content and new images made up of various parts often that you'll want to move around, that you'll want to remove or put in front of or put behind each other. With this one, the image is the image. Exactly. Your job and is to maximize the quality of Right, and you could take, you could work on a photo perfected in this and then bring it into Photoshop if you need to add titles or other kinds of layers of stuff. Mm -hmm. um, so that's Prime. What else do I want to show you? Um, there's another cool tool here um, called uh, Lens Sharpness, I believe. I'm trying to find it Where in the menus that? here. I, I, I can't find it in the menu. Wait, okay. is, it, is it in detail? Lens sharpness. There okay. it is. See where my cursor is? What does that do? So this is a pretty neat thing. This, remember how we said that they have all the data on your lens? Right. Um, and your, uh, what it basically does is what it sounds like. It makes an image sharper. And do I But have... does it make an image sharper better than the sharpening tools we're used to? I'm gonna. I'm going into my review here. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Don't, don't look at the pictures. Uh, here is okay. Let me open this image, and if you can see, look at the difference between the left side is without the sharpness, the right side is. Mm -hmm. It's really mm -hmm. noticeable. But um, it doesn't look over sharp. Exactly. It's That's not, the key. It's not sharpening in, in the in the sense of the traditional sharpening, where you're taking all the edges and making them look really crisp. It's really just um, compensating for whatever the lens has mm -hmm. done. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So there's lens sharpness. Um, now, how about let's look at the new stuff that was added um, based on Nick. And this tool here, local adjustments. Mm -hmm. This is everything that's new in Photolab compared to Optics Pro. So now when I think of local adjustments, I think of like the, now I, I, took, I took photography in high school before we had any digital photography. So I'm thinking of like the little paddle that you would wave over right. a photo. So you can see here, I don't know, is that coming through? Sometimes these video effects, you can see a little brush here. And so I can brush this area, and that's just affecting this this area of the sky. And so now that, that adjustment, that's not a paintbrush, right? That's a saturation right. brush. Right. Now, but actually, it's it's many things. So if I right click on this, oops, you can see I have a tool here. I can I can. This is the selection tool. I have a graduated mm -hmm. filter. Mm -hmm. This is the brush I've been using. Now this control point comes from the U point technology from Nick Software. Um, auto mask. This lets you select an area automatically. But, um, but now see here, these tools, this is what the brush is going to do. I can up the exposure just in the area I've brushed, contrast, um, micro contrast, which is kind of adds sharpness to the photo as well. Um, right, so once again, it's not a drawing brush, it's an alteration brush. Exactly, exactly. Local adjustment brush, mm -hmm, we, we call mm -hmm. it in the field. So saturation, white temperature, um, blur, uh, no that's tint, sorry. But anyway, I have all these tools. and and. I can up and down these for just the area that I've selected. So, so for example, let's um, where's the the, vibrant, the saturation? Let's let's up that all the way up and see how that looks in the picture. Uh, why isn't it? All right, I'm I'm not good at this. For some reason, it's not doing that much. Um, what about vibrancy? Let's take another question. Saturation. Do you know if this program uses any AI to uh, power its enhancements? Nah. What does AI mean? It doesn't mean? use that buzzword. It uses it, it uses computation. <laughs> How about yeah. that? Yeah. So what here we can see I've I've upped it. This guy is so lacking in any color that I've upped the the um mm -hmm. saturate, the vibrancy of the area. It areas. just makes it a little bluer. Yeah. 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 Um, but anyway, um, you you could use this uh, like for a face in a, in a portrait or something mm -hmm. that you want to change the, the color, like the tone. Now, now closer to the closer to the AI question, I think what some people really want when they hear AI is things like auto scene detection, auto face detection, no, it doesn't. Um, auto um, auto shape detection for masking. It's really just image. It's just looking at the image. Okay, quality. okay. So it isn't it isn't identifying objects in the image. Identifying. It's not machine the, learning. It's not. Right. Um, right. What, fuzz, what are the um, what's the other fuzz fuzzy word? logic? Besides machine learning, machine learning and there's another one of those yeah. terms they always use. AI um, is a, AI in terms of these questions is often mostly just about recognition and about the ability of the program to recognize various items in the photograph, and it sounds like this does not do that. Okay. Um, now this is this this feature could be um, considered. So now, now 
see this head in the picture? Notice on the on the right uh, left side, there's a head ruining my beautiful mm. picture of the floor at the St. John's basketball it's also game. Also dim. And yeah, well, that's the other corrections were applied in the right side as well. But notice, look at where that head was in this side. It's like it was never there. So it's sort of detecting the texture around there and it's replacing. Now, now Photoshop and Lightroom have a feature called content aware move, mm -hmm. these content aware tools that do a similar thing. Mm -hmm. But um, I just think this did a great job. Like you would never notice that there was a head there, mm -hmm. even if we blow it up. It's really hard to see that that wasn't always floor. Okay. So that was the last thing I wanted to show. Let's take one more question. To clarify again, this is now our new editor's choice. Is it a co-editor's choice? It's a co-editor's choice. We, so now remember I said how the organizational tools are not so great with this. Um, like there's no face recognition, mm -hmm. there's no map mm -hmm. stuff. Um, I don't think there's map stuff. It's not good for managing a large library. Exactly. It's like you saw when, when we go into the, um, the organized mode, it's basically just your folders. Mm -hmm. So you're not like importing and uh, analyzing the photos the way Lightroom does. Um, so Lightroom is, is a workflow editor's choice. I have three of these sort of high-end photo um, photo software editor's choices. Um, this is one just for the tools that, that we just saw. Um, the other is Lightroom I just mentioned, and the other is Capture One, mm -hmm. uh, Phase One. From Phase One, they make the $50,000 cameras. Um, they also make software. And Capture One, the, the reason they're an editor's choice primarily is because when you initially take the raw mm -hmm. file, they seem to get the best image. They get the sharpest, like mm -hmm. the most lifelike image from the, the absolute initial um, raw tool. And they, you know, they have a lot of other great tools too like this. So you could call this the photo editor's choice. You could, yeah, you could. Because it's editing. Uh, let's, uh, let's take one more question before we go. Does this run on a Mac? Oh, uh, yes, it does, it does. Because okay. I just downloaded it and I remember there was a Mac choice too. Okay, great. So yes, so this has been uh, DxO Photo Lab. It is one of our editor's choices for uh, photo editing software. It is very much focused on editing and optimizing your digital photos, whether they be from your camera or your phone. Uh, we have a full review up on PCMag.com. It is uh, four stars and an editor's choice. Uh, thank you all for watching. If you are on Facebook, please come back at 10 a.m. Eastern tomorrow uh, for, oh, wait, it's Friday, right? Today's Friday. Today's Friday. I always forget when it's Monday, Friday. Come back. I always forget when it's Friday. <laughs> come, back at ten, come back at 10 a.m. Eastern on Monday uh, to participate in the discussion again. If you are on YouTube, uh, please keep checking back on PC Mag's uh, YouTube channel. We will have another cool thing every weekday. Please like and subscribe. Thank you all for watching, and we'll see you again.